co uh, you know copy and notice in, in as much as you know elections and campaigns are managed uh, wow uh, that's that's quite a powerful question I, I was talking to a friend of mine in the states and I was telling them that uh, now the United States knows how to have a tribal election mm -hmm. because they have made it about communities they have made it about religious bias and by and large they've forgotten issues for example of uh, the economy uh, it has taken quite a, a, a back seat in terms of what is directly emotive it's become us versus them uh, the two candidates uh, hardly agree on anything if you ask them uh, the color of the sky they will tell you it's either red or blue uh, and and therefore there is there is there is quite a difference but at the same time uh, the decorum with which the United States has carried this election. Uh, we've seen the Republicans apologizing for calling uh, Puerto Rico a garbage heap uh, and things like that. So <laughs> these are things that uh, make their politics a bit more sanitary than uh, what Kenya is. Uh, but also this is the second time we are seeing the power of a politician uh, in casting aspersions in an electoral uh, system. Uh, Trump has already started singing that if he loses, it will be because it has been rigged. And you've seen for the first time uh, in, in a very long time that the American people are actually discussing uh, about whether uh, the, the elections are safe, uh, secure, and reliable. You might think that uh, they have uh, Chebukati there as well, and Raila Odinga and the rest of, of that ilk. Uh, but at the same time, you, you also have seen some very uh, sad statements, uh, statements that usually would uh, pass in Kenya in previous times when you say that certain groups of people eat cats and dogs. You know, it, it is, it is uh, lowering the value of our people. We know uh, what people have used politically in this country before, uh, talking about people's diets, uh, about animals with necks and uh, what have you. So th definitely it's a mixed bag of things. But uh, back to Kenya and one of the things that I think we, we must also recognize is the non-NATO, and this is back to the point that was being made uh, before, the non-NATO ally is, is, is not just uh, tokenism. There's quite an amount of military equipment that Kenya has uh, received, but not only that, it, there's an amount of uh, uh, a certain level and certain classes of ammunitions that Kenya can now access from the United States. Uh, now, this may seem like a small thing, but let's, let's remember that Kenya is a country that is surrounded by conflict, uh, from Congo uh, to Burundi to uh, South Sudan, to Sudan itself, to Ethiopia, to Somalia. So uh, Kenya's ability to project uh, military power and to project uh, its, its alliances uh, across the world is also quite critical, not only in the actual fight because we don't expect Kenya to go into a conflict, but also as a deterrent that uh, those uh, who are our enemies, including such terror organizations as Al-Shabaab, uh, will think twice when we have uh, guided precision missiles and we don't need to send our boys there uh, to, to deal with them. So they, they, there is uh, certain uh, military uses uh, for this uh, non-NATO uh, uh, ally. But for me, in, in a nutshell, uh, the, the, the American election for once has taught us that uh, just being Western does not necessarily make you better than us. And mm -hmm. they can make as irresponsible and frankly foolish statements as some of our politicians uh, make. And that also gives us as an opportunity as Africans to project our intellect, to project our ideas, and actually help them uh, to know that elections can be free and fair. And if you disagree, you don't storm the Capitol. You go to the Supreme Court and you deal with it uh, the way it's supposed to be done. So it's, 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 it's a mixed bag, really. Mm -hmm.